Hi, welcome to Luxury in Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. So today's video is going to be a little bit different because I filmed some things about the Loewe puzzle bag. Um, if you saw my last video, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, I'll link it above. Um, but I had filmed a second part to that video talking about more pros and cons of the Loewe puzzle bag and I was deciding if I should keep it. Since then, I have decided to return the bag or sell back the bag to Fashion File. So you're gonna see some footage from the previous video session talking about pros and cons, but then I wanted to get more into the uh, refresh program, which is the Fashion File program where you can sell back bags. And also my biggest mistakes in buying the Loewe puzzle bag. I'll definitely have timestamps below so you can skip to the part that you're really interested in. Before we get there, if you're new here, welcome. My name's Joanne and I film videos about luxury handbags, luxury lifestyle. So now let's get into the Loewe issues and why I ultimately decided to sell it back to Fashion File. The bag that I have is the small puzzle bag. I bought it pre-loved in the gunmetal colors. The strap is a little finicky for me. I don't know how to get it to lay flat. Another con about this bag is that it does not have feet. I usually love to have feet on my bags just to protect the bottom a little bit, but Loewe stopped doing feet on their small size bags for some reason and they've only kept feet on the puzzle bag in the size medium and larger. Another con about this bag is the opening is a little bit weird for me because you can see that there is a flap that covers the zipper and the zipper is very smooth. I have no problem with that but because of the flap, the way you get into the bag is directional, right? I feel like if the zipper is facing away from you and let's say the bag is on my side and I'm like coming in and like I'm like grabbing something, okay, that works. But also the zipper and the opening is facing away from my body and towards a potential stranger that could also just reach in from this side. So then do I kind of flip it around and have the flap face me and then you know that's kind of weird because this hand can't get to it unless it's like going at a really awkward angle or I have to get the opposite hand to like go grab stuff. Let's go into some positives which is that this is a great size. It fits a water bottle. Um, it's got enough width to you know be have quite a good capacity. There is the back um, zippered pocket on the small size where I can put my phone. Um, the mini size does not have the back pocket. I would say the final good thing about this bag is that it is very low key. You know, if you know what the puzzle bag is, yes, it's pretty unique. But other than that, it just looks like a gray leather bag. So I planned on using this to travel and I wanted to be, you know, not a target. So I wanted a low key bag. The one thing that is my biggest concern is that the style of this bag, I don't think it's me. It has all the things that I thought I wanted. And I always thought I loved the gray color for me. It's another neutral that's not boring. I love wearing gray, so why shouldn't I have a gray bag? But maybe it's too cool for me, you know? Like, I'm not like a rocker chick. Maybe this is trying to shift me away from my existing style too much, you know? I know for me, this is my first Loewe bag, and I admire the brand. I think they have wonderful leather quality. I think it's very elegant and a lot of people can pull it off and maybe I wanted to be like those women or men, but it's not truly me and it's not something that I want to become. So I don't know, like I, I've realized that getting this Loewe puzzle bag, I've stepped out of my comfort zone. And sometimes that can be a very good thing because you're evolving, you're changing. Um, I definitely believe in always growing and learning, but maybe it's too outside my comfort zone and maybe I don't care for being that type of woman myself and only admiring it from afar. So I'm going to just do a very quick shot of it on myself right here. So this is where I have it. 
And honestly, I think objectively, it looks very cute. You know, it's a good size for my body proportions. So it doesn't look bad. However, I just don't know if it's me. All right, so now that you've seen some of the pros and cons that I was considering back in April, the one thing that I really did love and I wanna emphasize here is that it was low key and I didn't feel any pressure when I took it out. Um, I felt like the people in my life didn't really know Loewe, didn't know the puzzle bag, so I felt very comfortable taking it to any situation. And after my last video, I know a lot of you guys commented that it was a great bag, I just kind of needed to know how to use it, and you guys brought up a lot of great points, and I do believe it is a great bag for a lot of people out there. Ultimately, I did decide that the Loewe small puzzle bag was not a bag that I wanted to keep because it was just not a style for me. I talk a little bit about how it's outside of my comfort zone. It was a little bit maybe too elegant, I think, for my style, which is not that put together. Like, I try to look nice, but I'm really casual. And so I just felt like, while the Loewe puzzle bag was very chic, it was just not going to be a classic style for me. And now that there are rumors that they're discontinuing that original puzzle bag, um, the word classic can have a lot of different meanings now, and I'll get into that in a little bit. But what I want to convey is that when I tried it on, I felt like, you know, it was cute. It probably looked good this summer, but I didn't see myself thinking it was cute, like, three years in or five years in or a bag that I wanted to continue to wear that long. So that's when I decided I was gonna get rid of the bag and I knew that Fashion File had a program where you could sell it back to them but I didn't know much about it. I am here to share with you more information because I don't think they make it very clear exactly you know, how much you're gonna get. Um, they kind of have some general blurb. They say you can sell the bag back to Fashion File and refresh your closet. I mean, obviously it's a good business model for them. First they get you know, money from you when you first buy it, then you sell it back to them um, at a loss for sure. You know, you're definitely gonna lose money and then you know, they get to sell it again. So I originally bought this bag on January 17th. That's when I placed my online order. And I bought it for $2,320. And I think that was including tax and everything. So three months later, on April 17th, when I was considering selling the bag back to them and you know deciding if I wanted the Loewe puzzle bag, I saw that the refresh program price, if I sold it back to them on that day, was $1,740. It would be a loss of $580 for me. And again, this was exactly three months later. In their general blurb, it didn't really say like how much percent of the bag you would get back every month that you, you know, waited to sell it back to them, right? Because they just said the sooner you sell it back to them, the more money you're gonna get. And so I wanna stop right here and point out that I made a very, very grave mistake my first month of receiving the bag, which is that I did not even take it out because I was so sure of my decision. You know, in my first video, I talked about how I contemplated what the perfect bag would be, um, a bag that would be low key, had a zipper, I could take to travel. And because I had taken so long to decide on the perfect bag, that when I bought my bag from Fashion File, I was like, you know what, it's perfect. I made a great decision. It sat on my shelf and I was waiting to take it to my vacation in May. Um, so I just got back from Scotland and that was my plan. My plan was I'm going to take the Loewe puzzle bag to Scotland. So it sat on my shelf for an entire month and then my husband is the one who pointed out like, hey, you bought this bag and you not even using it. Like, what's up with that? So at that point, I was like, okay, yeah, maybe I should probably take it out and like test drive it. So that's when I started to 
actually use the bag and realize that, hey, maybe it's not the perfect bag for me. But I had lost a whole month of time, which is why I missed that return window um, of actually, you know, when you receive a bag from Fashion File, you are allowed to return it if you don't like it or if it's something, you know, different that you saw online. But I completely missed that window because I was so sure of my decision. So that was just a very, very dumb mistake that I want to caution everyone against. Please don't do that. Once you get the bag, even if you think you're sure you'll love it, take it out within that return window and just make sure. So now let's get back to this refresh program and how they, you know, buy back your bags, how much money you're going to get back. So three months after purchasing, I was offered basically 75% of the money that I paid for it. So they were gonna offer me 1,740, so I would have lost 580 and basically get 75% of the $2,320 that I paid for it. So I was like, okay, well, if this is the price at three months, maybe I do have a little bit more time to decide. Cause I, again, I was going back and forth and I was like, man, I'm gonna lose like almost $600. Is it worth it? Should I try to make it work? Should I, you know, really see if I just wanna keep this bag and not have that loss of almost $600? Well, on April 30th, I finally decided, no, I'm going to sell back this bag and it's probably gonna be less of a headache versus me listing the bag by myself. So I might as well just take advantage of the refresh program and go for it. On April 30th, only 13 days after I checked the price on April 17th, they had already lowered the offer to $1,624. So an additional $116 um, they had taken off the table in those 13 days. And see, that's where I am still confused, where it's like it's not on a monthly basis where they're lowering the numbers or it's not counted on the month of the day that I bought it, right? Like January 17th, April 17th, I had assumed that maybe May 17th, they would have lowered the cost on May 17th, but they didn't wait until May 17th. They didn't even wait until May 1st. Um, I didn't check the prices every day between May 17th and May 30th, so I don't know which exact day they lowered the price. Maybe they lower the price by a couple dollars every day, but basically, on April 30th, I was offered $1,624 to sell the bag back to Fashion File, and that would have been 70% of the money that I paid for the bag. So I knew I had, you know, left money on the table if I had just decided sooner to sell back the bag. I maybe wouldn't have lost this much money. But in the end, I ended up losing $696. Um, having possessed the Loewe bag for less than four months. Fortunately, I did wear the bag um, between February, March, and April, like quite a lot. So there was some decreased cost per wear there, um, but it was still a very expensive mistake on my part, just having owned a bag for less than four months and it truly costing me about $700. Just a cautionary tale for you all out there. If anyone has any more details on how the refresh program works and how they calculate exactly how much money they're willing to offer you for the bag on what days, it would be great for you to share in the comments. I do want to share that after I decided to sell the bag back, it was a pretty seamless process. I confirmed I wanted to sell the bag back um, on Fashion File on April 30th and they said I would have basically a month to return the bag. Basically you can ship it back to them, which I think is uh, there's some shipping costs or um, I could bring it to a local um, physical space. So since they're now owned by Neiman Marcus, I brought the bag back to Neiman Marcus on May 2nd, even though they gave me until I think like May 30th to bring the bag back. Neiman Marcus shipped the bag back for me. Um, it arrived at the Fashion File facility on May 9th, 
and then they paid me on May 11th. So that process was pretty quick, you know, shipping just took a week and then they paid me two days later. So I will say if you want a no hassle way to sell back to Fashion File, it does work. Obviously, they're going to probably give you a lower offer than if you went through the hassle of listing and selling the item yourself, but you know, that is the cost of convenience. Now, just to touch really quickly on the point of if the puzzle bag is going to be a classic or trendy bag, I want to first thank you all who commented on my last video. You guys gave me great tips on how to use the bag. And I think even though, you know, those tips may have helped me use the bag a little bit smoother, easier, you know, with like the strap and the zipper that I was having issues with. I ultimately looked inside and tried to decide for myself if I felt comfortable with this bag style. So it had less to do with the functionality of the bag and more to do with the aesthetics of it. Um, because at the end of the day, it all boils down to, I think, aesthetics and prestige at this point when you're talking about luxury bags because you could get the exact same bag or a very similar bag at much, much cheaper prices. So what are you paying all of that extra money for, right? It's like how you feel in the bag. If the bag makes you feel more confident due to whatever, due to its prestige, due to its color, due to its size, due to its whatever, like that may be worth paying for. And for me, I ultimately decided that the Loewe puzzle bag style did not make me feel um, as confident as I would want this $2,000 plus bag to give me. The puzzle bag has been very, very popular for a few years now. Now that Loewe seems to be discontinuing the original puzzle bag, probably due to the fact that they could make the edge puzzle bag a little bit cheaper. A lot of people are speculating what will happen to the original puzzle bag style. Like, is it going to skyrocket in price on the secondhand market or is it going to kind of disappear and become just a trend? For me, it's not a classic style that I would want to wear for a decade. Um, but if you have a very different style and you absolutely love it, then, you know, it's just going to be a permanent fixture in your closet and there's nothing wrong with that. So I would love to hear your thoughts on the puzzle bag. If you think it's going to become a trend or a classic style now with all the, you know, discontinuing talk. And also, if you have any questions about the refresh program, please don't hesitate to ask. I want to help you all not lose as much money as I did. So please leave me a comment and thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the time and I will see you in the next video. Bye.